All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, I've done a couple changes to this program, and I think with this, I'm going to call it a wrap and call version 1.5 done. Be sure to check the video description for the link to download this off my Google Drive. But I want to call out a couple of important things. Uh, this should be the same file that we dealt with the other day on the first uh, teaser demo here. But what I want to show is this two wide zone here. The algorithm that I'm currently using to generate coefficients does not like that. It works sometimes, depending on the scenario, but other times it gets pretty wild pretty quickly. And we don't want that to happen. So there's a warning in here that will say, hey, you know, it's only too wide. I don't think you should continue. You have the option to override it. Well, why don't I just show you? So we're going to go into here. And I'll just say 25, and let's just calculate this. And what you're going to see, now notice, this is the strange thing. We have several zones. No, the lines disappeared. Great. We can see we have one, two, three, four of these zones that are too wide. One of these is going to cause it to totally freak out. And it's you're going to see a giant spike go up and then go down, and it's going to oscillate back and forth. Let's just calculate it. So you get the warning. Do you want to continue? We're going to say, sure, let's do it. And so then you can see the correction and overcorrection occur. So and then if you keep going, like I put in 25, then you can see it aired out on 14. But we're having some issues here. And so you can continue to click back and forth, but this is going to be a while. So uh, let me pause the video and get past this and I'll see you in a second. All right. So now that we got past that, let's just go ahead and bump up the zones. And by the way, uh, I've been told that there are some Gen 5s from the OEM that actually come with a too wide zone definition. So uh, nothing much you can do about that. The problem may originate from the fact that like this zone only has one value in it. And so it's trying to fit all of these other values as well. So uh, the more data you have, the better. But in the end, what I found is it didn't really matter if I just increased the zones sizes. And the, well, why is it like I have a Gen 4, right? But why is this too wide? And that's just because I wanted super high resolution. Um, with this cam to be able to control the idle zone as well as off the tip in where it, you know, gets a little bit crazy and things are kind of chaotic. I wanted to fine tune it. And so that's why I had two. when I manually bumped everything up to three wide, uh, this program handled it with ease, as you saw. So let's just go ahead um, and, you know, the same values in all of these other areas, right? So control D takes you to the zone definitions. So let's paste this in. And so now you can see, let me go ahead and hit save. All of these zones have updated. We are now three wide. And so we're good. So at this point, we go back to here and we can say 25, calculate coefficients. Oh, I forgot to move this over so we could watch it real time. But this is really the part that I wanted to show you the fixes for. So when we look at this, this is that same, you know, you can see that we have some saddle shape going up here. That's, you know, this guy right here. Saddle, Pringles. I mean, Pringles, pretty cool. I like the Pringle shape, whatever. But this is stuff that we kind of need to deal with and smooth out. So how do we do that? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to go back over here. We're just going to reset this back to stock, so to speak. Pop that in. And so now at this point, uh, what you would do, so assuming we're starting from scratch, right? We're inputting all this data. You want to, if you want to merge multiple closed loop logs, as well as multiple PE logs, you know, wide open power and enriched stuff, get all of these in here, get them averaged together, get it to your final state, because this next part is going to completely override all of that. So now we're going to go to the Paste Special tab, and we're going to look at this. And what is causing that saddle shape is 
uh, these values in here that are just kind of like in the middle and we have the majority, we don't even have uh, values in here, especially these hanging out like kind of in the middle is not, not a good thing. So the way that we're going to get around this is kind of similar to interpolation. Um, so we're going to highlight, and this you can do more than one zone, but I would only recommend doing one zone at a time. I want to highlight this, and when I right-click, I have fill in missing histo cells. So we have the average, and so this is it's averaging both of those together. And so we have average, and then uh, we can do a custom one. So if I don't like negative one, two, maybe I could say, well, just make it negative one. But we'll just we'll do this here. So let's just do the average. And so now we have all of these guys. And same thing we can continue to do here. In this area, I found it seems to handle pretty good. So I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, but this, we notice we don't have anything. And you don't have to do the whole, whole zone at a time, right? Uh, but I don't have, and I like when I interpolate, like before I started getting involved with making this program, when I was in the editor by itself, I always interpolate uh, vertically. And that's because of the valve events and the timing and the resonance, all this stuff that's set up. This direction is much more linear than this direction. I rarely, if ever, I avoid interpolating horizontally at all costs. So I don't have any values here in that column. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to say fill in missing histo. And this isn't too critical, right? Because this is kind of an unreachable zone. But here I'm going to keep filling in all of these and I'll just do the average. Whatever you have highlighted in this selection, in this case, I have negative five and negative one. It's going to take those and average them together. And it's like, it's only going to fill in the blanks with this average. So here we go. I'm going to go in here. And we're just going to keep doing this whole thing. And I'll probably do this. Maybe this one is goofy. And this is kind of unreachable, not too big deal. So let's just do average all those out. We're going to come in here. And oh, it's taking a while. Let's be lazy. Control G. Uh, control A is select all. I didn't want that. Control V is paste. I didn't want that. So G seems logical for average. So Control G should allow you to move a little bit faster. And you know, this case, we'll just do that. And let's just see what we do here. I may end up kind of fast forwarding this video, so you don't have to watch me go. But I think by now you get the idea here. And so we're just going to see what happens here. I know this is taking a while, but I feel like the results are worth it. The juice is worth the squeeze, as they say. So let's see what happens here. Now, the other thing in a situation like this, we may end up seeing kind of a ridge here uh, form because we're taking out quite a bit and we already have a smooth transition. So what I may do for this is I may do something like this just to, to smooth this out. And we'll see what we get. And if we don't like it, then guess what? We'll keep hacking away at it because we have nothing else better to do than to make the most beautiful virtual VE shapes in existence, right? That is what we are all here for. Oh, look at this guy. Let's fill him in. Oh, I wanted to. Oh, perfect. I made a mistake. Let me right click. Let's just do delete. And then there we go. Look at there. And 
And, you know, this kind of assumes that we have kind of a decent starting shape to begin with. It's not too far off. And this should work pretty well. Uh, these other guys, let's just go ahead. Let's see what happens. Let's just average all of this like so. And we'll just make some broad sweeping changes here. These guys are pretty good. Let's just go ahead and average both those together for the whole zone. And let's see what happens. Okay, let's do this guy while we're here. And we'll do this guy. Oh, this is fun, right? Okay, now let's go over here and let's see what kind of shape that we get. See if we can get rid of the Pringle saddle. 25, let's, let's let this thing rock. All right, that's not so bad. We definitely have a spot in here developing that we probably need to, uh, I think that would be easy enough to interpolate once we get it in the HP tuners. Um, I think version two, I'll include interpolation in here so we don't have to break over to HP tuners to get that. But for the most part, not too bad. Now to get this stuff back out to HP tuners, it'd be the same way for this version, right? We'll copy this and you could either copy these values or you could go into, where did it go? View histogram output as literal. You could copy these actual values in here. So we'll do without axis. And we could pop into this guy and paste it in. Now, you still need to calculate coefficients uh, one final time, which, you know, not too bad, right? Just to get those final ones in here. And let's see what the shape looks like. And so, yeah, you can see at this point, we do have a little spot that we could touch up, right? If we wanted to, and this should be, you know, no big deal if you're used to this kind of thing. So we could easily just go zap, calculate, not bad. And then, of course, we can smooth this area out up here as well uh, to get rid of that little ridge. But I wanted to get this out to you so you guys could play with it, uh, see what you like, don't like, if you have any tricks, ideas. Uh, but, you know, get some feedback or just general stuff of what's going on. Now, one other thing that I did want to point out, you'll notice this ability to right click and do this fill in missing histos is only enabled here when you're on the paste special. So if we go back to the histogram output, you notice it did fill in these values, right? And this is what I was telling you. Make sure you get in all your histograms averaged and where you want them before you start messing with it, because this is going to override that. So you can see all of these values are now in here. But when I right click and I cannot fill in, right? So I want you to be over here because... And also, in order to make this work, right, like if I do this and I want to do fill in and I do average, well, guess what? It's going to tell you, you can't be on this literal view. You do need to go back onto percent. So make sure you come up here to view and go to percent. And then at this point, and the reason why this is, is the way it is, is because this is the error against this table here. We do need to check and always make sure that we are comparing the error, the new error, against the new virtual VE table. So I don't want you to make changes necessarily on this view without context of this is the current error. This is the only screen really that matters once you get into it. So again, video description has the link. Uh, please download it. Try it. Let me know what you think. Uh, there's room for improvement. It's not perfect, I know. But again, I just want to get this out here so we can prep for uh, version 2.0 and make it better. And so um, that's where I'm going to be working on at this point in time. Anyway, I hope you like this stuff. Let me know what you think. I appreciate any feedback you have or ideas uh, to make this better or more useful or user-friendly. Anyway. Onwards and upwards, my dudes.